All right, so anyway, we get Richard Tenney out. I moved back here. In 82, they have a thing called the Mission Holders Conference. The missions were like little, the little part of Scientology. It had the missions, which were the field group that basically got people into Scientology. Then they had the orgs or the churches, which you see the big blue complex. That's, the, that's more organizations and their upper organization. And then they had the advanced organization, which, where they do the OT levels. And then they have FLAG, which is in Clearwater, Florida. And they also have their secret compound, which when you're in Scientology, you can never know this. But it's out in Hemet, California. <laughs> and I didn't know it, but one night I'm with a guy, one of the executives, going to someone's home for Narconon for, that was going to get on the drug program. And we're driving down this dark road. It's completely dark. And, I'll, and you have to realize, I'd been in at the time like 20 years. Had no idea where the Golden Era Studios was or Int Management. And all of a sudden, I see these gigantic white signs, Welcome to Golden Era Studios, right? Which is Int, which is their si secret base. And I say to him, what the hell is that? And he goes, well, you didn't see it, first of all. And he says, secondly, we had to do that because our PR was so bad in Hemet because we had the secret compound, so we had to open it up to the public. So they do that, like they'll invite people in, they give you their little phony tour. It's not really what's going on there, but it's what they want you to see for that kind of thing. So the public knows where it is. It's been in the papers and people know where it is, but Scientologists don't know where it is. <laughs> it's weird. Anyway, ethics, this is read from Hubbard. Ethics is to remove counterintention from the environment to remove other intentionness from the environment, okay? So anytime there's, and they consider anything other intention. If you want to do yoga, they, that was other intention. If you want to read books that are books that they don't think you should read, you know, there's a piece of blue sky, that's totally other, out ethics. Now, this was the old guardian's office before they got, went to jail. This, I'm going to just read you this, just to, so you get a clue of how deep this was. The vital targets on which we must, in, what, in which we must invest most of our time are one, depopularizing the enemy to a point of total obliterate, obliteration. Two, talking over, taking over control or allegiance of the heads and properties of all news media. Three, taking over the control or allegiance of key political figures. Four, taking over the control and allegiance of those who monitor international finance and shifting them to the less precarious financial standard. And five, generally revitalizing the societies in which we are operating, winning overwhelming public support, and use all other similar groups as allies. That was in February 69, Hubbard wrote that. That's L. Ron Hubbard. Okay, now you didn't see that, I didn't see that. You know, it's one of these, these are like the in, the in crowd read this, right? That was the Guardian's office, and they ended up going to prison. Hubbard wrote all these things, right? He wrote them. His wife ran the Guardian's office, but what happened when they got busted? They come out, they go, L. Ron Hubbard never knew of those things. He would never do things like that. And Mary Sue, he sends his own wife to prison, along with eight other people. But you know, you're like, okay, well, you know, it's just, it goes on and on, where that kind of thing, where you're just like, how can that be? But it happens. The end of OT3, I was sure, I was, I was done with epilepsy, right? I'd handled all the BTs and clusters, I must be fine. So I go on another program to get off my medicine, and I end up in Morton Plant Hospital next to Flag in Clearwater, Florida, and nearly died again. That was the last time I ever tried to get off medicine. Now I'm at war with them because they want me off of it, and I'm like, no way. So I continue on in the 80s helping them. They have a bunch of legal things that I was part of. Uh, Portland, they had a big crusade, a lady who sued them, and you know, overnight, we were all ordered to the complex over at the blue complex. You have to be there in a half an hour, right? We all get there. Okay, all of you are going up to Portland in a half an hour. Go home, get whatever you need. You're going to be there as long as you want. Go, right? Th these people are suppressive. They're trying to hurt our church. I'm going to give you an hour to get home and get back. We'll have buses. We're going up to Portland. True story. I go home, I'm packing my bags, my husband comes in, what are you doing? I said, this is like the army or something, I'm going to Portland, you know? <laughs> we're at war. So we drive up to Portland, they had 10,000 people fly in from all over the world, Travolta flew his jet in, they had Chip Korea come in. We were there for weeks and weeks, and she still ended up, she won 
um, a huge millions of dollars. She won, but then they ended up twisting it and winning on appeal, you know, because all of us were there. And, you know, they do their thing where they trick people and get to the judges and stuff like that. It's tricky. It's really tricky. Hubbard had a thing called black PR. Well, actually, he had a thing called, I want to read this to you because I brought this. He had a thing called fair game. And fair game, I brought the actual thing. Let me just see if I can find it. Hang on one second, because it's worth, it's worth hearing it. I feel like Lucille Ball, you know, I'm like, where is it? It's here somewhere. <laughs> I know it's here somewhere. Okay, anyway, just everyone take a break for a second. I know I have it here. I do. Anyway, I can tell it to you, I know it by heart, because I can't find it right now. Don't go, don't leave. Don't leave. All right. Huh? I know, I should be, right? You'd think so, right? I'm OT7, what's wrong with me? Right, isn't it amazing? But it, the, you actually get worse and worse as you go up this pyramid of OT stuff, you do. I mean, your memory's worse. I gained 100 pounds on OT7, no kidding. I lost 60 of it, but I was a wreck. I was living wreck. Look at Kirstie Alley, she's OT7. You know, it's like that's, you, you see these people come around the corner, they're like the Pillsbury Doughboy. Like, what happened to you? You know, they're on OT7. You know, I don't know what it is. You have to be sessionable all the time. You have to eat all the time. And plus, you're stressed out because it's not working. So it's one of those things that it moves along. But anyway, here's Fair Game from L. Ron Hubbard, 18 October 1967. Penalties for lower conditions. Anyway, he has liability, treason, doubt, enemy, SP order, which is what they have on me. I showed it to you. Fair Game may be deprived of property or injured by any means, by any Scientologist without any discipline of, of, of the Scientologist. May be tricked, sued, lied to, or destroyed. L. Ron Hubbard. Now, I've stood up in court and said, that's not true when people said that about Fair Game, because he wrote a cancellation of Fair Game. But the truth is, at the bottom of the Fair Game, which Scientology whites out to us when we were in, this does not apply to suppressive people, the cancellation, right? So they can still lie, cheat, steal, destroy people utterly. I didn't know that until I got out. And, and I'll tell you about what happens there. But I still want to keep moving up the line. So they have a bunch of, as he said, as Vaughn said, they have legal situations all the time. It's one of their biggest things is suing people, taking them to court, trying, and it used to work for years. Because see, they would declare someone a suppressive person Nobody could talk to you, so you lose all your friends overnight. And who would believe this story? You know what I mean? You'd start telling someone and they'd think you're nuts. So people would literally leave and just kind of be off. And I mean, I've talked to people. It was a really sad time for them. But now, thank God because of the internet and thank God because of what we call critics who are free speech advocates, who are basically exposing Scientology around the world People, you know, I can now say to you this story and say, go read it on the internet because it's there with all the documentation. So it used to work, but it doesn't work now. And, that, and Hubbard never planned on it as much as he was so brilliant and he thought of everything. He didn't think about the internet and it is taking them to the cleaners, I'll tell you. 